from reinvigorating agriculture, directing livestock vaccine and drug design, automated agriculture machinery, to path precision technology drones, AI-driven solutions are revolutionizing traditional farming techniques into cutting-edge modern practices. In fisheries and aquaculture, AI has contributed to a more efficient fish stock monitoring and aquaculture automation. Through AI, food systems have become more sustainable and more intelligent, a necessary tool to combat the challenges in environmental conservation and global food security. AI-driven developments are impactful in the agricultural and archipelagic Philippine, and our homegrown experts take the lead in realizing this potential. So basically today, I'm going to speak about uh, artificial intelligence integration with the drone technology. So we are more of a drone uh, person, so we uh, specialize in drones, and uh, AI is a very valued tool for us. Let's have an overview of uh, the integration of uh, AI in drones. So AI-powered drones offer groundbreaking opportunities, and uh, integration of AI drones advances our autonomous system. So nowadays, before we used to fly drones uh, manually, but with the AI, we are now uh, able to fly drones on a preset path, uh, do uh, research and everything using that, you know. Drones have evolved into intelligent self-operating devices. So unlike uh, before, it's just a flying, taking pictures, but now it has intelligence. Intelligence, uh, it does autonomous uh, flying, data gathering, and all of those things. AI enhances functionality and effectiveness, improving safety standards. Our drones nowadays have uh, uh, collision avoidance, path, uh, path uh, following, and uh, even, uh, what, even uh, data gathering in the sense that um, we have already uh, using, uh, we are now using right now uh, towards the the data gathering of uh, a high value pictures and everything using already uh, CPUs before, but now we're heading towards the GPU for our computer systems. It also helps us in developing uh, aerial pictures, uh, data. Before we used to rely on uh, the satellites, but nowadays we are now using our drones for having a closer picture of, uh, example, a rice meal or a rice. Uh, rice field or anything like that, allowing us to monitor plant diseases, plant yields, and many more. Uh, the challenges we have right now is, uh, number one, is regulation. Um, we are, we uh, operate under the CAAP rule, which is the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. The CAAP requires us to have a drone license, uh, meaning to say you have to study, the, uh, be, enter a drone school, which uh, Philippine Pat, uh, by the way, has, uh, we build drones in the Philippines. We have our own uh, drone schools. We have our own uh, drone simulators. So we train our people using simulators. After that, then we allow them to go flying. When they go flying, uh, we start with a toy drone, you know, the one with the lights that you can buy anywhere. And then from medium drones, enterprise drones, and agricultural drones. The reason behind that is because each drones has its own uh, functions, and the uh, controllers are different. The, the, the memories and everything, the functions, everything are all different. So if you want to do LiDAR, then you have to do an enterprise drone to, to do mapping and surveying. If you want to use uh, Corona to see the sparks in the transmission line, then we use uh, different instruments. And different drones are, have uh, different capabilities of uh, attachments that you use. Safety and collisions. So drones nowadays are different. It's not like a typical drone that you have that you only fly and once in a while to crash you know, in, a, in the wall and fall down. Drone nowadays have collision avoidance. We have terrain following. So when the drones go up to a mountain and the mountain goes up, the drone also automatically goes up. So these are the functions. As you can see, it's now different. It's, now, it's not the same drones that uh, we have before. Outside, we have uh, two kinds of drones, an enterprise drones, which uh, can be equipped with cameras, lidars, corona, infrared, night vision, anything. So you can see uh, the, the extensive uh, 
uh, market that we can, uh, we can go to the MMDA to monitor traffic. We can go to uh, the windmill to see the cracks on the blades. We can do the solar farms and all of that. Battery life is always an issue for drones. Uh, there's a short-term solution and a third long-term solution for battery life. Uh, the reason why battery life is a problem for drones is because a larger battery is required for a longer flight, but a larger battery will also require a bigger drone. So you can see some drones have two batteries, like the one we have outside. We have two batteries on our drones. It could operate around 40 minutes, but depending on the load, uh, our average agricultural drones ranges from 30 kilos to 50 kilos load. So 50 kilos is basically a, a sack of rice. So you can imagine that drone outside there could carry 50 kilos of uh, pesticides or fertilizers. Data processing is also another problem. Drones have a sh small memory. It's like a cell phone. We have only uh, 150 to uh, 512 memories, or we have one terabyte memories. So that's a problem for us. But again, we can get real-time data. Uh, if we want to expand further, then we have to go to cloud. We use uh, cloud in, uh, in, uh, in our database. Autonomous operation, that is a function that uh, we are very proud of having. So it means say we can preset a path for when we do a spraying for a rice field. A hectare of rice would only take us six to eight minutes to, to spray, converted, uh, compared to uh, the regular farmer that requires three days of spraying or spreading the fertilizers. Our drone can only take, do it for six to eight minutes. So that is why it's very important, the battery life. But again, um, if we have a long, long, um, long inspections, like example, we're going to inspect um, 100 kilometers of transmission line. Then we change our drones to vertical takeoff drones, or what we call the VTOL. The VTOL flies, you know, and uh, more or less uh, measures lock, longer distance and everything. If we also need uh, to fly a more detailed drones, then we use uh, our uh, drones, uh, four-axis drones, six-axis drones, to do our inspections. And after 25 kilometers of flying from different towers, we have what we call a switch over. So we, we can switch over to the, next, uh, to the next remote control, and it takes over on, uh, on the next uh, 25 kilometers more. So you can see that drone technology have already uh, uh, expanded to, to different ways, and it's really high tech already. It's not a regular drone that you just take pictures and uh, see around. Security is a problem also because uh, we work on, uh, if we use uh, shorter distance, we could use uh, the internet. But if we lose for longer distance, then we have to use the GPS. So with that, uh, it's an open, uh, we have to secure our, our lines, our pictures, our datas. And that is also an issue that we, are, we have to occur. Okay, so how do we uh, integrate AI? What do we do? Uh, what do we need, you know, and uh, to make uh, AI uh, into uh, a software, a solution for our drones? So first, we need to specify the case and requirement. So meaning to say, assuming we look into right now, we have a collaboration uh, going on, and we meet uh, every uh, two weeks. It's a collaboration with uh, UP uh, Geodetic, uh, Diliman Geodetic, Computer Science with uh, Dr. Frost, Dr. Ayin, and then uh, with UP Los Baños, which is uh, Dr. Rex, and uh, Dr. Prompt, and Dr. Moises is on the team. And uh, together with the OE, OE attended uh, the, the one from the Department of Agriculture, head of the computer side, was also attending there. We regularly talk to SEC Kiko, SEC uh, Rogers, uh, regarding our collaboration. So our belief is very simple. The, the university has all the talent, but when it comes to the application, they have a big problem. There's a, there's a lot of theses on the board, you know, and the theses are very good, but for some reason, the industry doesn't have a hold on the thesis. So what's happened now is, you have very good ideas, it's on the shelf. So uh, how did uh, this uh, thing arrive from us? It arrived from us, we used to be a, a leader in the industrial automation. We built Nestle, we built Procter & Gamble, Miran, Power Plants, and uh, James Hardy, and many more. We do the controls of the plants, meaning to say we do the cockpit of the airplane. 
So that's what we do. We use a SCADA system, PLC, HMI, and all the stuff. So we do integration, build OEM, turn or turnkey plans. So after that, we said uh, we're in the retirement age. We better stop and enjoy our life, go on holiday. We fly every other two weeks. We fly out of the country. So one of these days, um, when our when our batchmate won, uh, and our regular meetings and uh, Duran Duran and all the stuff, you know, uh, we I was asked, hey Lowell, uh, aren't you gonna do anything for our agricultural? You know, is there a possibility of uh, getting 20 pesos for our per kilo for our rice? So I said, uh, I have to look into that. And the first thing I did was uh, I had a meeting with Sekiko. And uh, during our meeting with Sekiko, uh, he, he endorsed us to Sek Roger, Sek, you know, Chris, and all the sex. And after that, we found out uh, what agriculture is doing in terms of uh, our agri agriculture in the Philippines. We found out that uh, most of the things that's being done is spraying and spreading, what they call spraying and spreading. So basically, they go to the field, they spray uh, pesticides, and they spread fertilizers. So I said, uh, I was wondering, uh, why do you do that, you know? It, isn't it uh, the same as uh, you visit the doctor and when the doctor sees your face, he says, ah, oh, injection yan. He doesn't even know, you know, he if they've done examination, he doesn't even get your blood pressure, he didn't even do an x-ray, didn't do a blood test, and he says, injection yan. So that's the same thing as spraying and spreading. So I said, you should do it the proper way. And that's what we call the precision agriculture. Okay, so let's define first uh, the cases. So you must define what you want. For, for our uh, collaboration project, we have two projects. The first project is uh, plant yield monitoring. So meaning to say, uh, what we do is uh, we monitor the plant, um, we do uh, the precision agriculture, and we expect the yields to increase by 25% from what, it, uh, what it's doing. So after I do that, we also do what we have, uh, what we call the, the induced uh, disease. So UP, Dilima, uh, UP Los Banos gave us a greenhouse, and we are injecting a disease on the, on the plant, on the rice, and we would monitor the disease. So in short, uh, we are more of a hands-on practical company instead of a theoretical company. So we gather data using our drones. We are, uh, for mapping and surveying, we use LIDAR for, uh, multi, uh, for uh, inspection of the, where the water, if it's needed water or dry land, we use the infrared. We use multispectral, hyperspectral. And after that, with all these data that we gathered, we now work with the specialists, like the doctors, the UP Los Banos, and then they come up with a solution. And with the solution, we now do a spraying and spreading and monitoring how we select our development models. So what we do is uh, we identify the problem, and from there on, we work with AI to identify the sickness. When the drone flies, it can identify if it's color brown, it identifies using you know, uh, what, what sickness and everything. So this is the method that's done worldwide, not only in the Philippines. Uh, for the Philippines, it's gonna be a very, very brand new thing. We also do a... Uh, train and validate models. So what we do is uh, we do a trial and error. So we incite uh, this, uh, this data, then we also put other data and see if it would give us a real valid data. And then the next one is the hardware integration. That is the problem. You now have AI, but the thing is, how do you adapt AI with cameras? How do you adapt AI with LIDARs for doing mapping serving, infrared, multispectral? So it's really, you really need a collaboration. You know, the university, private sector, the end users, everybody should work together. So the next one is uh, onboard processing. That is where the problem is, because now with all the data and everything, your regular computers are not anymore applicable. You know, you could do it, but it will take you ages. So you must need to go to GPUs, which is around 300 times faster than a CPU. So those are the issues that you need to, uh, to solve prior to having an AI on your drone. The next slide is, uh, is a very good example, you know, on how we integrate AI into a simple solution. We chose precision agriculture. So the first one is 
we do a mapping and surveying. UP uh, gives us, UP Los Banos gives a 10 hectare rice field. So we fly the drone using LIDARs. We now do a mapping and surveying. So after we now know, why, why do we do that? Because some people say we have a 10 hectare, but in reality it's only around seven. Why? Because some are mountainous, some are not, you know, are not uh, capable or not uh, good for planting. So after we know the area that we, are, we, we want to do, the next one is we do an infrared. So infrared is we now fly the drones again using our infrared, then we identify the dry spots, the wet spots, you know, and all this and everything. Next one is we use hyperspectral. So now we can now detect the disease in our plant. We now detect uh, what is the growth, what is, uh, what is uh, going on. Uh, before, people use satellites. Uh, the DA uses satellites. But the problem is satellites, and they get their data two weeks old. So I mean to say, by the time they get the data, it's a two, week, two weeks old data. Oh, now, nowadays, we use uh, multiple satellites. We use uh, French satellites, all the satellites. I think there are around more than 30 or 40 satellites around the world. And then we use the satellites. Then we can reduce that to around three days data. So using, reducing that to a three-day data, it's not still enough. Why? Because the pictures that satellites gives us are too small. You know, imagine for the space, and you're now looking at the Philippines. So you can see that's the color change. You can see the brown, yellow, you know, different colors. So it tells you more or less an indication of what is the status of your field. So with that, we fly the drones. It shortens us, uh, it, it gives us a better idea. I mean to say, when we fly the drones, we see a brown, that's our priority. The next one's a yellow and everything. And from there on, we can evaluate, you know, at the very near, we can evaluate the sickness, the problems, and everything. The next slide is uh, using multispectral. We, get, we now monitor the plant yield. How's the growth of the plant? You know, it should be growing this much, you know, but how come it's not? Then we evaluate that, you know, using AI, multispectral, and everything. The next one is, with that, with all the data, with all the pictures, we now give the data to UP Los Baños, and we work with experts. They know, through research and everything, what's the problem. You know, ah, this is a sickness, oh, you know, you need this and do that. And then that's the time we do spraying and spreading. Spraying of pesticides, spreading of fertilizers. In doing that, uh, it's, not a, it's not a trial and error. It's basically a scientific way of doing farming. After that, we monitor and see the effects. It's like a doctor. After you take a vitamins and everything, the doctor checks you and how you feel. And that's how we know if we are doing the right thing or not. This one, in doing this, we help uh, in the environment. Why? Most of the rice fields that we have are, are dying, not because of sickness. It's dying because it's over pesticides. You know, it, it's too much, uh, too much pesticides, too much fertilizers. In doing this way, you, we, we have a control of the environment. We do not kill the soil and everything. We also do a cost savings. Philippines requires around 31, a regular farmer of, does it around 31 days to do a hectare of, of rice for a cycle. Uh, Thailand does it four days. Vietnam does it two days. So that alone, that, that, that alone shows you that we're doing it the old-fashioned way. So it will save us costs in terms of labor and everything. Next one, also climate change. We can now also, uh, with the climate change, and the, the, we can now also monitor how uh, what, what we are doing, that's how, how, how does it affect the climate change and everything. So this is uh, a typical cycle of, uh, of uh, precision agriculture. So as you can see, it's not only AI, it's not only drones, it's not only cameras, it's not on, you got to have the expertise of all. That's why the collaboration is very, very important. That's how other countries does it. They, they don't have a team that has a geodetic, the agriculturists, they don't have such thing. They also work with the university. So that is why it's very important that uh, we get a place. The president gives us a place in UV so that we can work together for <laughs> developing this. Uh, okay, next. Uh, now, advantages uh, of AI, yeah, next please. Okay, it's uh, enhanced. Uh, basically, it's uh, enhanced uh, autonomy. So in, in doing that, in doing the enhanced autonomy, basically, uh, everything now is uh, already, uh, our AI algorithms uh, tells you, uh, guides you, 
uh, on, on everything. So the advantage of AI is uh, the data that you put in, you know, is also the data it will basically, it's, it's like a computer. So it, it does the thing for you. So if you tell him that, you know, if you see this sickness, it's going to be chances of 80 percent this one. For the windmill, what we do is uh, when we fly the drones to uh, the windmill and we check the blades. So when it flies around, it takes around 1,000 pictures, it goes around. And then we put it uh, towards AI, and the AI now uh, cuts down the 1,000 pictures, 80% chances of a crack, 20% crack of a crack, and all of that we now sort it out, and a solution is being brought. The next one is uh, improve awareness. Uh, with AI, we, we use uh, machine computer vision, machine vision, and everything. So it, 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 it's aware, you know, when it flies, it's aware if there's an object in front of him, it's aware yeah, that it should follow the terrain. It also uh, tells you um, safety and everything when it flies around. So basically, it gives us uh, improvement awareness. Intelligent navigation, as I said, the AI algorithm ag identify optional flight paths. So it, it tells you uh, if you do a flight pattern, uh, when you do a spraying, what happens is it flies. At the end of a certain period of time, it runs out of fertilizers, it runs out of whatever, it goes back. When it goes back automatically, it starts again from the point it stopped, and it starts again. So uh, it sprays on areas that needed to be sprays, it needed to be spread, it does a good job. Not like, you know, you just spray around. So next one uh, is uh, real-time data. Having AI, uh, meaning to say, Cameras, everything, you get real data. So when you fly it now, you don't get it three days from now, you get, don't get it two days from now. You, it depends on the storage of your drone. So if you have fly the drones and you get the data in it, then you can, when it comes down, you can automatically get the data and evaluate whatever the problem is. If you need a bigger data, then you, uh, you go to cloud again. Another one is uh, what we now uh, see a lot is the swarm. Uh, Swarm coordination, which is the show, drone show. Okay, that, that's a very good example, the drone show. Uh, we were supposed to carry a drone show also in the Philippines, you know, because election time's coming. We wanted to bring an election drone also to do the drone show. But uh, so far, our negotiation with them is not successful. Uh, by the way, uh, a, a drone show, uh, one drone costs around $800 to 1,000 US dollars per drone. And we are talking of 1,000 drones uh, to have a very nice show. So we need uh, to, with AI, we need the coordination of the drone show, allowing them to share uh, sensors around them to share information and everything. So next one is, of course, predictive maintenance. We are now able to more or less uh, know when is, uh, if our drone is, uh, um, is going to be OK or not. We're using AI. It, uh, it detects the function. We can also do algorithms that tells us that uh, we, need to we need to do this repairs and everything. It's like a car. After a certain period of time, you need a regular maintenance. OK, with that, uh, I'll just speak. Uh, la my last one is uh, speaking about uh, what are the applications of drones. Uh, application that we are doing now is, uh, number one, is, of course, the biggest market. 80% of the 80 to 90% of the drones are agriculture. Agriculture means to say because that's food. So when you got agriculture, we got coconut. You go rice, you get corn fields and every sugar canes. So precision agriculture is what I showed you earlier. That's the number one uh, application. Second one is infrastructure inspection. That's where you do pipelines, uh, solar farm fields, windmill inspection, you know, bridges, buildings. You can also do that. And the next one is uh, search and rescue using infrared night vision. You can also use drones. So uh, as you can see, uh, now the question is you wondered, why, why not use a small drone? Why, not, why, why, do, why do you use such a big drone? The, question, the answer there is very simple. It depends on the payload. If the payload is bigger, then use a bigger drone. The problem of big, having a bigger drone, then your problem is a bigger battery. Then you, you know, it goes on and goes on. Now, how come some drones are six axis, six motors? Some drones are eight axis. But how come your drones are only four axis? Because when, uh, when, when the drones came out, they were eight and 12 axes. But the problem was, uh, because of the load, they need more motors, they need more power, more trust to carry the loads. But nowadays, uh, we're using four axes because we have bigger motors. 
you know, bigger motor, so it's like you know, flying an airplane with a bigger jet engine, then it's the same thing. So next one is delivery service. Uh, we are now on discussion and having that. Uh, delivery service uh, uh, will be a Grab competitor or uh, Ancas or whatever competitor. Ours is, uh, we're gonna put uh, like a boot in, in corners in, in located areas. And then when you order uh, your Jollibee or anything you order, what you do is uh, the drones will now bring it up to that uh, ideal place where it drops it down. And then all you do, do is just go there and punch in the number and you get your delivery. So there will not be any more motorcycle deliveries. There will not be any more anything about that. It's like environmental monitoring. We also monitor uh, the, uh, using uh, sensors and everything, you know, the pollutions and everything. We can do that. And of course, uh, security and surveillance, you know, monitoring using drones, AI, uh, following the cars, you know, identify the pictures. In fact, uh, we are now in discussion also doing a smart city. So smart city is basically uh, just uh, cameras and AI, you know, identifying you where you go. And the last one, of course, is mining and uh, exploration. So those are the present uh, uh, application in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, values. Uh, of course, precision agriculture is around 80% to 90% of the market. You know. Uh, okay. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, so these are uh, little samples of environmental. You know, using AI to identify the carabaos. You know, the sizes and uh, the, how many carabaos and everything deliveries. And also the next uh, next slide is also, yeah, yeah, uh, mining and exploration. Okay, so once again, thank you and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye.